this is the wonderful thing about gratefulness that it first of all the best thing about it is that it gives you joy if, mm -hmm. uh, if we all know people who have everything that one would need to be happy mm -hmm. and they are not happy and you ask why not and when you look carefully they are not happy because they are not grateful mm -hmm. they have everything they could uh, be happy with but they want something else or they want more uh, or they want different things right. and then we all know people who have practically nothing and they are really joyful why? Because they are grateful for the little bit that they have. Mm -hmm. You know that each one of us holds the key to joy and happiness in our hands uh, if we are grateful. Mm -hmm. the, uh, joy rather than happiness because what we really want is a happiness that doesn't depend on what happens. And that's what I call joy. Mm -hmm. if, if you are happy because something nice happens to us, we can be sure in life sooner or later something that's not so nice happens to us. But if we have joy, that means even in unhappy situations, we look, yes, this is not something for which I would be grateful in itself, uh, but it gives me an opportunity. Right. Most of the time what we receive gives us the opportunity to enjoy. And we, mm overlook that because we are so busy with other things. Mm. So the first thing when you uh, practice gratefulness, practice stop, look, go, is that you discover there's so much more uh, to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Then you come across something for which you cannot be grateful. Violence, oppression, exploitation, infidelity, lies, all sorts of things. But in the moment in which you are confronted with something for which you cannot be grateful, you can be grateful for the opportunity right. to learn something by it, to grow by it, or even to protest, to say, no, that's a wonderful opportunity we have. Right. I remember how young people uh, in the 60s and in the 70s protested, say, against the Vietnam War, or how they put the students protested against apartheid and really contributed here in the United States a great deal to the end of apartment, apartheid because they forced the uni their own universities to divest in South African stock. Mm -hmm. So we contributed here by protesting, by saying, no, we don't want to go along with that. And nowadays, uh, we have lost that. Mm, no, I mean, I think there's a lot of racial tension in that, and it's hard to see police abusing African American people, and it's hard to see gays um, be discriminated against. And I think that it's moving. It's it's mm -hmm. as you were saying, like I I have hope. You know, as a mother looks at a child, it's like okay, it may feel feel really painful, um, mm -hmm. but it does feel like an opportunity for some really great things to happen, even though the pain and the sadness when you see the actual violence that's perpetrated against people innocent people it's it's hard it's very painful but you are right there is hope there is hope in the sense of openness for surprise that yeah hope. and this openness makes you act very differently from if you don't have that hope and mm -hmm. that hope is something different from hopes because hopes are always something that you can imagine right but hope is openness for the unimaginable that transcends mm -hmm. all the things you can imagine you ought to have many hopes you have to imagine this, how it's going how you wish that it would go but if it doesn't go that way you should not you need not le lose hope because oh surprise surprise that doesn't work that, that hope is shattered but now we have another hope mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then i think it's Going back to the things that you said in the very beginning about God or the mystery of life, that maybe the thing that you hoped for was not the very best thing anyways. That's maybe right. there's actually a better outcome that you can't comprehend with your human mind, but that a bigger force can understand that's out there. Sometimes I go there too. Absolutely right. My, my favorite name for God is surprise. No. <laughs> All other names of God are boxing God in. They are not really such good names. Yeah. 
surprise. So that means it's open. And everything that is alive, alive is surprising. And, and God is life itself, if you understand the term correctly. So it ought to be surprising, and we ought to be open for that surprise. And those are the three things we have hit upon in love, yes to belonging, hope, openness for surprise, and that trust in life, that radical trust in life, which is faith. Because right. faith is not believing something that follows and, and is always limited by our understanding and by our culture. And what, what connects every person with faith is trust in life, and thereby trust in God if we want to use that. Mm. So those three things, love, faith, and then what was the other one? Hope. hope. Yeah. Faith, hope, love. And those th three things were the, what are those? <laughs> I, got lost in the, I got lost in the words, and I was, then I got lost in the magic, and I forgot what the concept was that you're sharing. I'm sorry. Well, we are hitting upon really deep things here, so it shouldn't be surprising <laughs> that it's a little difficult to, to go along. But it's not, uh, it's not really uh, uh, complicated. It's yeah. very simple. Right. It's, it's just we, our minds are pretty complicated. Yeah, I, I went with the words and was so present with the words. I'm like, wait, what are those three things? So what, what are those three things? <laughs> he said, hope, faith, love. Um, what are they? You said oh. these are the three things that we need for... For life, really. Oh, for life! Okay! <laughs> for life, but uh, really dealing with life. First we need faith, then yes. we need trust in life. It, right. You can refuse that trust. Uh, you don't have to have it. But uh, you can check what happens if I don't trust that life gives me good things, even if it looks bad, because the packaging is pretty... Right. <laughs> Uh, if you don't trust that life uh, is giving you good things, then you're constantly fearful, mm. constantly mm. going against the stream. And that doesn't lead anywhere. Mm. Uh, that makes you anxious, that makes you sick. Uh, so just for self-preservation, trust life. Trust mm. life. That's mm. the starting point. That's faith. If you trust life, whenever it's alive, it's surprising, because mm. it is not surprising it's mechanical. So right. if it's alive, it's surprising. Next thing, openness for surprise, that's hope. And mm. if you're open for surprise, it's a surprise how everything is connected with everything. That we are able to talk here is connected with the work of millions and millions of people who invent computers, design computers, design Skype, uh, that I even c could get here is uh, it depends on every person that tightens a screw on the wheels of an airplane. Right. All connected with one another and with the animals and with the plants. And to discover that surprising connectedness, you say, yes, that's it. And this, yes. yes, not only with your mouth, but with your whole being, that is love. Yes, love, enjoyment, love, joy, enjoyment of this miracle that we're given that can, uh, not only change our own lives uh, it will make our own lives happy, more joyful but it can change a whole scope a whole culture because uh, the, uh, gratefulness and joy are contagious yes and imagine a culture that is not like ours fearful that is probably unfortunately but the main characteristic <laughs> Fearful, out of fear, it becomes aggressive. Uh, out of uh, fear, it becomes a, 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 rival, a case of rivalry. We right. want to the head with our elbows. And out of fear, we think there isn't enough for everybody, and we become greedy. Right. Now imagine a, a, a culture in which everybody is grateful. If you're grateful, you're curious. What? what ah, this is not. Mm. And you're curious, and the moment you're curious, you can no longer be fearful. Mm. So don't get together. You're curious. So for a moment, you forget your fear. So if you're grateful, you're not fearful. If you're grateful, you are not aggressive, because aggression springs from fear. If you are grateful, you are cooperative, because you 
you're grateful for what all these other people do. I can mm. be here if it's not for mm. other people, maybe people who I will never meet. Mm. So you are cooperative and you are sharing. Mm. If you're grateful, there's always enough for sharing. Mm. Uh. Grateful people, uh, the poorest people, when they are grateful, there's always something to share. It's amazing. Mm. That's why you focus on great. There's so many different things that you could focus on: love, forgiveness, all these things. Is that why you focus on gratefulness? Because it because kind of it contains all of it. You see? It's sort of the master key to all. Of it. Right. And that sharing. A friend told me yesterday. He was in a. Uh, he visited a. He's a reporter, and he visited a, a camp, a refugee camp, where there were children, and. The children had to flee quickly, and they were just taking one thing, and one had a teddy bear, and one had a oh. And this one boy had marbles. He had a handful of little marbles, and he gave the reporter one marble out of the handful of marbles that he had. Uh, that was the only thing he had in life. No. Very touching. Yeah, very, very touching. Yeah, that's, that's life. Yeah, yeah. I love the lens of life that you live. I'm, I aspire. I, I have to remember the part. The hard part is the stopping and the looking. You know, putting the pen down. <laughs> yes, we can actually uh, give ourselves a little reminders for stopping. Uh, yeah, is this a good start? Like if you put a little sticker on your computer uh, outside. Uh, before you will see the sticker before you open the computer and it will give you a split second to say, oh, thank you for having this computer. And you will, it is a very different attitude opening mm -hmm. up. Yeah, little reminders. I like that idea. And before you turn your car key, you will stop for a split second and think, I've got a car. It may not be the model that you like, or it may not even start so easily. <laughs> it will eventually start and get you there. And for that, you can be grateful. Yes. I love that idea of uh, as you begin the next transition, just stop. You know, if I'm putting the pen down and going from writing to chanting, stop. And go, ah, the miracle of music. It's just that little split second in the gap between transitions. If you can just stop. I like that idea. I'm going to try that. You got it. And everything is look. And what you really look for is the opportunity of that present moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of your opportunity. What is that opportunity? And we can uh, train ourselves to become more sensitive to this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, but as I say, mostly the opportunity to enjoy. Yes. To enjoy it, enjoy it. And uh, no guilt, and you will your joy would overflow to us. Well, I am, I am thoroughly enjoying this interview. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Gratitude. You have wonderful questions, and I wish you the very best for your program, and much love to all your hearers. It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support, love, and blessings.